My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCann.com. This podcast is entitled, Is It Game Over for Digital in Oil & Gas? Is digital transformation all over in Alberta's oil and gas industry? That seems to be the feedback some Alberta companies are giving to conference organizers. Well, it couldn't be further from the truth. A conference organizer contacted me recently to confirm his findings from a recent trip to Calgary. He's contemplating bringing a conference about digital innovation that he organizes in other Canadian cities to the heart of oil country, but is receiving a discouraging reaction to this idea. He floated it with a number of large companies about the demand for such a conference and was politely told that oil and gas was already digital. It's completely accurate that some aspects of oil and gas are highly digital. The upstream sector is very data intense and has been collecting and interpreting seismic data for decades now. Big oil companies match governments in their ownership of super large data centers and supercomputers to process their data holdings. And the industry has a history of selling data, which I've not encountered in any other sector. The upstream sector connects almost all of its infrastructure to SCADA equipment. But the oil and gas approach to digital is consistently out of sync with a digital world that is expanding in capability on an exponential basis. That is, every 18 months, something that is digital has doubled in capacity and halved in cost. The industry business model anticipates scarcity of data, storage, and computational horsepower, a few large business partners, and a stately pace of change. The business reality is rapidly shifting, with a superabundance of data, unlimited storage, and flexible on-demand analytics, lots of clever innovators and startups, and a hyperkinetic business cadence. A single digital company, Amazon, designs, tests, and introduces over 50 million software updates a year, during which time a standard oil company might launch a few hundred. To describe the industry as already digital is a mischievous misdirection. I'm alarmed that some in the industry might think it helpful to paint the industry as on par with the digital industry leaders. It communicates to next-generation talent that there's no opportunity in the industry. This isn't healthy. The industry already faces strong headwinds from society, and the youth contemplating their career options have ample opportunities elsewhere. Instead, the industry should be presenting itself as the center of digital innovation among all Canadian industries. Second, capital market participants need strong encouragement to invest in oil and gas. There are a number of movements around the world to divest or severely restrict capital investment in the fossil fuel sector. The industry needs a new narrative that it is a high-tech sector, not just leveraging technology, but pioneering new technologies. The top six largest companies by market capitalization are all digital. Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, and Tencent. And third, it robs the industry of much-needed attention from digital entrepreneurs. Since digital is impacting all industries at the same time, just not at the same pace and intensity, entrepreneurs and startups have lots of opportunity to chase. Without clear signals of interest from the industry, these entrepreneurs are going to direct their attention elsewhere. A late adopter. There's ample evidence that suggests oil and gas is a latecomer to the wave of digital change. The book, Digital Vortex, co-written by IMD and Cisco, looks at a dozen industry sectors to forecast the timing and impact of digital innovation. They conclude that oil and gas is 11th out of 12 sectors, well behind retail, banking, transportation, and technology. Only the pharmaceutical industry will feel the effects of digital later. I read similar conclusions in my book, Bits, Bites, and Barrels, where I look exclusively at the various segments of the oil and gas industry, upstream, midstream, downstream, and services. The IEA, in their global study about the impact of digital on energy, argue that oil and gas would only slowly be digitalized. This analysis all makes sense to me. It's much easier to design digital in than add it after the fact. Digital on paper is pretty cheap compared to adding digital to steel in the ground. 85% or more of the assets in oil and gas were in place before digital was even a thing. 
the window for adding digital smarts is usually pretty tight, the annual or semi-annual turnaround, which is at most only a few days in duration. On offshore platforms, the window is even tighter, particularly if hardware is involved. And of course, oil and gas is a cautious industry and very risk-averse. And for this, society is grateful. Spills of crude oil are hard to clean up. Gas pipeline ruptures turn into fireballs, and the product is toxic. The industry applies the highest standards for human and process safety and environmental compliance. Equipment must meet exacting engineering standards, and the introduction of new equipment, including digital, is done under strict management of change processes. Economically, it hasn't made much sense for the industry to even invest in digital. The downturn in commodity prices in 2014 has scaled back the industry's ability to invest, and the limited capital available tends to go towards a growth in reserves or production. With conventional oil basins operating for only a few years, it's also hard to justify investing in new technology. It's challenging for managers to demonstrate with clarity that a digital investment pays off. And finally, the culture of oil and gas is also biased against external digital innovation. The industry relies on industry insiders, that is, traditional technology incumbents, to design and introduce new solutions. Those insiders are often tied to legacy technology architectures and designs that date back decades and were never designed for the more open environment within which digital thrives. They are incentivized by contracting models and licensing structures to keep small firms at bay. Big oil struggles to figure out how to work with small, nimble startups. The ninth inning. Here are five signs that would convince me that the oil and gas industry has fully digitized and that we're in the final innings. Number one, everything is digitized. Everything that can be digitized is digitized, according to the digital vortex. In oil and gas, that includes tools and equipment, rental gear, vehicles, and workers, even rocks. The cost of using digital technology has fallen to such ridiculous lows that it is no longer a driver. For example, Enersoft uses a $300 consumer digital camera of 13 megapixels to scan drilling cuttings, which it uses to build a model of the subsurface at the level of detail of a grain of sand. Each well is converted into two terabytes of data, which digital tools, unlike Excel, handily ingest. In comparison, Alberta's entire well log library, built using legacy technologies, is just a fraction of this resolution. Number two, work is rethought. Oil and gas companies design work for robots and then add humans. Today, oil and gas continues to design work around a human worker and supplements that human with technology tools to do the job, such as a laptop, a tablet, mobile phone, and apps. Solid industrial digital, what we see in manufacturing, means designing jobs for a robot or an artificial intelligence engine and figuring out the role of the humans to improve the effectiveness of the bot. A survey of job postings in oil and gas suggests the jobs are still very much human first. Number three the technology penetration rate. The penetration rate of leading digital technologies in oil and gas would be 50% or greater. According to one of its various publications, McKinsey considers a technology to be mainstream when it is implemented in 50% of an industry's participants. Implemented does not mean in pilot or being tested. It means fully deployed in the business. The key digital technologies that must be widely deployed for the industry to claim that digital is done include cloud computing, bot technology, blockchain, virtual reality, and the Internet of Things. Next, digital oil companies are a thing. There will be digital oil and gas companies, pure digital companies. Hard asset industries have consistently viewed themselves as immune to the impacts of digital innovation, but experience now shows that that is a false premise. Bricks and mortar retailing, banking, mobility, transportation, hoteling, printing, all of these industries are now based on converting shareholder capital into hard assets that are put to work in a business model. Every single one of them now has a digital market leader who competes directly in the sector, but with a fundamentally different balance sheet. The earliest example in the oil downstream, where fuel delivery apps threaten the retail business model, are here. Companion to the existence of digital oil companies, there will have to be bankruptcies amongst the old guard. And last but not least, oil and gas is rebranded. 
the industry will be fully rebranded back to its historical narrative as one of the most technologically advanced anywhere. For the past decade, since the BP Macondo event in 2010, the industry has been on the defensive. The narrative is about safety, environmental respect, compliance, and sustainability, as the industry surrendered technology leadership to many other sectors, including banking, telecoms, and even digital companies. The sustainability narrative is important, but it is inherently defensive and futile, since the industry cannot reduce all of its environmental impacts to zero. Combusting the product creates the final, unsolvable environmental effect. So in conclusion, oil and gas is a long way from being digital. There is still untold opportunity for young people and tech entrepreneurs to find fortunes in the industry. Just ignore the message that the industry is a digital leader. It's not. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find Digital Oil and Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please tell a friend about the show. If you have a minute, please leave a review and a rating on iTunes, as that helps others find the show along with other great content. You can follow Jeffrey on Twitter, at Jeffrey Can, or on LinkedIn. Also, look for Jeffrey's new book, entitled Bits, Bites, and Barrels, The Digital Transformation of Oil and Gas, on Amazon and other fine online bookshops. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.